Hi, my name is Elijah, and I have the privilege to serve as the creative pastor here at City Life Church. We just wanted to quickly thank you. Thank you for tuning in wherever you may be watching from. Hey, if you haven't already, please go ahead and click the like and subscribe button. We believe that God has an amazing word for you today. So let's jump into today's message. My prayer for you is you've entered into a new season and a new day. You know, it was the Father that established new seasons and new years. Matter of fact, in the Old Testament, they celebrated and established festivals, marking these celebration moments. So we celebrate and believe that God is working. We're in our series, Believe for More. And last week, we, we talked about establishing God as the first in our life. You know, we're in this 21 days of prayer, and it's not too late to jump in. I mean, good things are already happening. Miracles are taking place. Our Wednesday worship moments are powerful. You don't have to be in the building. We'd love for you to come on Wednesday, but you can be at work, at home. Just jump online. We've had testimonies. I'm sure Pastor Jason already mentioned of God just invading people's space. So jump into agreement with us in this 21 days. Our series that we're in, Belief for More, is really not about believing for more stuff, more things. But it's about believing for more of Him. More of Him, less of me. John 3 and 30 says this, He must become greater, I must become less. He must become greater, I must become less. More of Him, less of me. We started last week on the last Sunday of 2020, talking about our belief system, our foundation, the core of our value system, and how God strengthens that, and he adds what is needed, and he removes things that are distractions, and he gives us a firm foundation to stand upon. And we read in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, somebody say his righteousness. Not our good works, not what we do, but his righteousness. Everything we need, all of these things shall be added to you. What he was saying is if you seek God and make room for him and you give him space, everything you have need of will be added. And many times as you walk out the purpose of your life, some of the things he is began to do and some of the things that he is doing you did not even you were not aware that he was doing them and what happens is he begins to add to our life daily he begins to add to our life in the journey he begins to add to our life as we walk out we talked last week about establishing personal devotion having a personal time of praise a personal time of worship having a personal word in our life and adding, allowing God to speak daily to us and allow him to speak into our life fresh, having a time of prayer, person, not just corporate prayer, not just corporate word, but that personal devotion. And when you allow God to do that, we find out that he's not only a hearing God, but he's a speaking God. How many know God is not just a God that hears your prayers, but he's a God that responds to your prayers? And my prayer for this year is that we would have an ear to hear and we would be attentive to what God is saying and we would walk out that work in obedience. So we talked last week about having a personal prayer time, a personal worship, personal praise, personal declaration, diving in the word of God, allowing it to speak to us and obeying what God says. You know, Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says this. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And when you realize that God wants to lead you into 2024, He doesn't just want you to walk and wonder, but He wants you to be led by a Spirit filled with the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 says, be filled with His Spirit. John chapter 6 says, the Spirit gives life. And as you are led by the Spirit of God and full of the Spirit of God, He begins to order your steps. And the Bible teaches us that we become fruitful as we are led by the Spirit. Matter of fact, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. But the Holy Spirit, verse 22, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. There is no law against these things. Uh, anybody a, a checklist kind of person? I'm not. <laughs> Pastor Casey is. I'm a little more like, let's just dive into it. Got to work it all out. She's a little more of a checklist. I, you know, people like me drive people like her crazy. But the, that's why God puts us together because her weaknesses and my strengths and we work, you know, we just work all this out. But she's more of a checklist. She's going to check it off the list. I'm just going to more dive in and let's let God work it all out. But, but sometimes we do need checklists in our life. We need moments of evaluation. And really, this is a great barometer to see if you are being led by the Spirit. To see if the Spirit's fruits are developing in your life. What kind of fruits are developing in your life? Sometimes when I look at those things, I don't always get a good picture. But there are times I look and say, man, Lord, you are leading me. You are guiding me. He said the first fruit that is developed is the fruit of love. I think it's the first fruit listed because it's really how we obtain um, relationship and how we are led by the Spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He, the Bible says when we were yet sinners, Christ loved us so much, he died for us. And what you have to understand, as this fruit is broken open in your life, the Bible says it cancels sin, it breaks fear, it allows you to believe. And my prayer is that we would have a revival of the love of God. Oh yes, we would stand for truth, we would look at a shifting culture and be resolute and who we are, but we would also speak a word of love. But like I'm telling you, it's the love of God that still changes a sinner's heart. It's the love of God that keeps you. It's the love of God that allows you to believe for greater days. And my prayer is, Lord, break open your love, an unconditional love, the way you love me. Let us be a purveyor of that love. He said there's a fruit of love. There's a fruit of joy. Now, what you have to understand is joy and happiness are two different things. You can be happy today and sad tomorrow. One phone call can rock your world. I remember years ago, we were in our old building um, over on Central, and I had just preached early in our ministry, and I got a phone call after church that my younger sister had been killed in a head-on collision. I was happy one moment and sad the next, but I still had joy because I realized that this life is eternal. We're not... We're, we're just here temporarily. I realized this was not the end. So even though I was sad in the moment, there was still joy in my life. That's why the Bible said the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. It, it allows you to be strong in weak moments. It allows you to rise up in dark moments. And my prayer for you is that there is a well of joy broken up and it becomes strength in your life. And then the fruit of joy begins to develop in you. Because I'm telling you, you can be sad today, happy today and sad tomorrow. But when there is joy in your life, he said, you're going to have the, group, the fruit of peace. Matter of fact, Jesus looked at his disciples and said, I'm giving you my peace. Not as the world gives it and the world takes it, but I, I'm actually riveting it into your spirit. The world will not be able to take it. It goes beyond your understanding. And my prayer is that the fruit of peace in 2024 would reign in your life. And when you cannot trace God, you still trust God. And when you cannot see God, you still trust God. And when you cannot hear God, you still trust God. And when you can't figure out what he's doing in this crazy world, you still know that he is on his throne and he is working on your behalf. Behalf, and the peace of God reigns in your heart. He said, you're going to develop the fruit of patience. I'm still cultivating this fruit. I have trouble with this sometimes. I want everything to happen overnight. But the Bible teaches me that when I wait upon the Lord, he renews me. Maybe God has you where you're at and he's not advanced you because he's renewing you. Maybe he's preparing you. Maybe he has you on the, in the field because he knows you're on the way to a throne. But here's the key to waiting. Can you wait in the field watching sheep when you know you're anointed to be king? That's the fruit of patience. Can I still sing in the field when I know somebody else is sitting on the throne and it's not yet my time? Because some of you, there's an assignment and an anointing for your life. You're just not ready. I'm not ready. We're waiting until that alignment takes place. And what happens is we wait on the Lord. And when I wait on the Lord, he begins to renew my strength. He teaches me to walk. He teaches me to run. He teaches me to soar. But it's all in due time because we serve an on-time God. He's never late. He's never early. But he's always on time. He said, you're going to develop the fruit of kindness. 
I'm telling you, we need a revival of kindness in the church. Just be nice. It's really that simple. Just be nice. Be nice to the barista at Starbucks. Be nice to the worker at McDonald's when they tell you to pull over into the lane. Even you know there's nobody behind you because they're on the timer. Be nice. Be nice to your neighbors. You say, well, pastor, they're not nice to me. Be nice anyway. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Be nice on Facebook. Be nice on Instagram. Don't do drive-bys and say these snarky things when you act like you're being nice, but you're really not. That wasn't even a message. That was free today. Be nice. We need a revival of kindness. It doesn't mean you're weak. It means you're like Jesus. When he looked down from a cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Be nice. The, the, the fruit of kindness. The fruit of goodness. The fruit of goodness. I'm praying that God uses this church to display his goodness in the earth. And that there is a conduit of generosity that breaks open, not just from this church as a whole, but from the people of this church. And that we give freely because we've received freely. And we walk as ambassadors of the goodness of God. The fruit of goodness. The fruit of faithfulness. You know, when I get to heaven, the Father's not going to look at me and say, man, you really did it. You had eight cars. <laughs> Woo, and you kept that one shined up. And you had a car nobody else had. Now, he's not going to say, you know what, you had a house on the East Coast and the West Coast. Now, there's nothing wrong with having stuff. I've told you this many times. Things are not the problem. It's when things have you. But here's what he's going to say to me. He's either going to say, depart, or he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithfulness is the fruit of the Spirit. Here's how many times you know you're not being led by the Spirit. When you can't be faithful where you're planted. When, when you want to be on the platform, but God has you in the parking lot. But maybe you'll never get to the platform unless you're faithful in the parking lot. Or maybe you're on the platform and God says, you know what, your assignment right now is in the parking lot. Or on a camera, at a door. Or just smiling as a greeter. Or just being faithful in your home. Or being faithful at work. He said, faithfulness. I'm telling you, God is requiring of me and us that we be faithful where he plants us. Gentleness. I'm praying that in this next season, I'm, I'm, I'm quick to listen and slow to speak. And there's a gentle spirit about me that's not harsh, but I just, I hear. Because sometimes God is allowing people in my path because I, I'm the hands and the feet of the kingdom that are going to meet the need of their life. But here's the last one right here. This is the tough one. This is what the Holy Spirit does. Self-control. And sometimes the self-control is not me just restraining myself from some great sin. Sometimes it's me not purchasing things I do not need. Running the credit card up that I won't be able to pay the bill. Sometimes it's going to the hibachi buffet and not going to the ninth trip to the... I'm cutting myself back to three. No, I'm just... But sometimes that self-control is just a discipline in our life in small areas. Because I find when I'm faithful in small places and I find self-control in small places, he allows me to rule over the much. And for some of us, he's establishing some places in our life and he wants to develop the fruit of self-control in your life so that you can be steadfast in the mission and the calling. And then he said this. He said, against these things, when they develop in your life, there is no law. Religious boxes cannot define them. People cannot stop them. The enemy cannot stack them. There's no law against these things. What he was saying, these things produce freedom in your life. These things will allow you to live free in your life. But here's what you and I have to make sure of. That we do not get fr uh, the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit confused. Because really, you are born with your gifts. And there are things in you that the Holy Spirit is going to unlock. That you, Man, I didn't realize I had the gift of teaching. But he develops it along the way. But here's what you and I have to make sure of. That we don't confuse our gifting 
and the fruit of the Spirit. Because I am telling you this, it's the fruit of the Spirit that validates the gift of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit in your life that it looks at you and says, you know what? You have been faithful, so what you're doing will be rewarded. And my prayer for us is that we do not get them out of balance, that we always want to walk in our gift but develop no fruit in our life. But my prayer for 2008, oh Lord, lead us. We are your children. Lead us by your Spirit. If you say go, we'll go. If you say stop, we'll stop. If you say step back, we'll step back. But whatever you say do, that is what we are going to do because we are your children. And we pray you develop in us your nature. That's why the 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says this, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that's why I can testify, if I'm being led by a spirit, he that the Son has set free is free indeed. I, I'm not where I want to be, but look at me. I'm not where I used to be. I'm developing fruit in my life. I can look back and say, you know what? The love of God is breaking open in my life. I have a joy that, be go, that goes beyond my, my moment that I'm living in. I have peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness. And you know what? I'm becoming more, I, I, I found myself to have more self-control than I've ever had. And I realize that I'm growing and I'm free from some of my yesterday. And I'm becoming what God has called me to be. And I realize this in that I discover a truth, a truth, an aletheia that unhides. And my prayer for me and you is this year that the truth of the word of God would speak to us. It would show me where I'm weak. It would show me where I need to work. It would reveal those places in my life that I need to be strengthened in. Because that's what the truth of the word of God does. It comes along on my down days and said, but no, you're a child of God. Get up and get to the next season. It allows me to believe I'm the head and not the tail the first and not the last bless going in and bless coming out and my prayer for you and I is the truth of God would rise up because here's the truth of the truth heaven and earth may pass away but this word right here will remain your world may get shaken but the truth of the word of God it never will come on somebody thank him for his word and his truth My prayer as God begins to develop in us and lead us, that we find greater dimensions of his grace. Because here, here's what you have to understand. He didn't just save you by his grace. He keeps you by his grace. And there are so many more dimensions to the grace of God than just being saved. He puts a grace on your life to activate the gifts of your life. He, many times it's a grace that keeps you from speaking when you need to be silent. It's a grace that allows you to be bold when you need to speak. It's a keeping grace, an establishing grace. A grace that never runs out, that's all sufficient. And as you grow in the fruit of the Spirit and are led by the Spirit, really this has to become a revelation more than a statement. You begin to understand that mercy is brand new every morning. It's every morning stepping into the yes of God. It's every morning denying the labels of the adversary. It's every morning stepping into what God has declared over me and resisting what the enemy has tried to label me with. No, no, no. I'm free. And that's when faith begins to grow. Because the Bible said he begins to build my faith, mature my faith, establish my faith, begins to stretch my faith. And, and I, I declare over you this year, for those that allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and develop you, that this will be a year of mountain-moving faith in your life. You're going to see God do some things where he eliminates and he breaks free. And some of the things you've been believing for, even some of the things you've written off the list because you think they're done, God's going to work and do in your life. You're going to believe again. You're going to dream again. You're going to trust again. You're going to hope again. God's going to revive some of those places of ministry or some of those promises in your family. And faith is going to begin to live. You know, this morning I was reading, and this scripture came alive to me. And I really didn't have it in my notes, but I sent it to the creative team. I said, add this to my message. And it's in John chapter 20, verse 19. It says this, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. 
When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. That's what happens. These weren't just ordinary people. These were people that had been with Jesus. They were there when he changed water to wine. They were there when he took a small lunch and fed thousands. They were there when he opened blinded eyes, caused lame legs to walk. They were there when he brought dead people out of graves. But watch, something had these disciples so depleted, so depleted, that the Bible said they locked themselves in a room. Fear had gripped their heart and their mind. They were anxious about the season. The Bible said Jesus walked right through the wall to get to them. I'm telling you, Jesus will walk right through anything he has to. Depression won't keep him out. Last seasons can't stop him. He walked right through the wall. And I'm telling you, if Jesus walked through the wall today, we'd come back and have night church. We might even have Monday church. I mean, we'd be on. We'd go into revival. Jesus walks through the wall. But these disciples are so depleted, they can't even see the miracle. Sometimes we get so depleted, Pastor Dale. We can't even see the miraculous around us. They're depleted. Jesus walks through the wall. They, they, and all of a sudden, he speaks a word of peace. Whew. Peace. Something begins to break. And then he does something. He reaches out and shows them the nail prints from the cross. And then he pulls his garment back and he shows them his side where he had been wounded. What he was simply saying was, because I won, you can win. You're not the only one going through stuff. But I want you to know, I went through some things and I made it. And because I made it, you can make it. Because I was victorious, you can victorious. Because I kicked hell in the teeth, you have victory over hell. And then he does something. He gives them a word. He gives them a word. Now watch. He said, as the Father has sent me, I so send you. But then he does this. He breathes on them. God will never give you a word without empowerment to fulfill the word. God will never give you an assignment without breathing on you and allowing you to have his power. He never gives you an assignment without the ability to equip it. He said, I'm getting ready to send you, but I'm getting ready to give you the power of my spirit so you can be led by my spirit, so you can war by my spirit, so you can sing in the spirit, so you can pray in the spirit, so you can advance in the spirit. He said, I'm going to breathe on you. What was that breath? It was that same breath we found in Genesis chapter 2 where the Bible said he picked up a lump of dirt and he began to work with the dirt and the Bible said it wasn't long that the dirt looked like him I'm so glad he's willing to work with dirt that's what he did in John chapter 20 he found a group of broken dirty disciples and he put his hand on them once again and he breathed on them and said now go by the power of my spirit I'm telling you God's not only got a word for your life in 2024 but he's about to release you with the fresh breath of his spirit he's about to empower you with this spirit he's about to release you in his spirit and you're getting ready to rise up and it's not going to be from a preacher or a pastor or a teacher but there's going to be a prophetic declaration come from your mouth you're going to look in the mirror and say your best is yet to come you're going to look in the mirror and declare your latter will be greater than your former you're going to look in the mirror and say old things are passed away and all things are being made new you're going to rise up in the power of the spirit and be led by the spirit come on jump to your feet all over the room give him praise We're getting ready to worship, but before we go back into worship and prayer, I want to share this story. This morning, a young man that had been early in our ministry, matter of fact, I've known him since he was just a baby, but he grew up in our church in Naples when we were first starting. Now, we started there in Naples with a handful of people, and his family was one of the first families to come. But I remember when Blake, which is now a youth pastor in Naples at a church, him and his wife Bree, at eight years old, they put him on a helicopter and I stood there with his father as they life flighted him to Tampa. And we began to pray and miraculously God touched Blake's life. And for years Blake was free, but when he got into his early 20s, 
that illness began to rise up again and it began to attack his kidneys. And for the last few years, Blake has been on dialysis. Good looking young man and tall. And so he said, Pastor, I was on this dialysis and he said, about three or four weeks ago, he said, I just woke up with a bad attitude. He said, I was cranky. I was mean to my wife. Not abusive, just wasn't nice to her. And he said, my wife looked at me and said, you need to go back to bed. <laughs> anybody ever had anybody tell you anything like that? <laughs> and he said, but she was right. He said, as I was thinking, he said, the Holy Spirit convicted me. And he said, I just began to pray in my spirit. And he said, I began to declare, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad. He said, Pastor, I kept saying it over and over. I will rejoice. And he said, all of a sudden, it just came into my spirit. This could be a day of miracles. This could be a day of miracles. And I, I simply said, Lord, this is the day that you have made. And I just believe today could be a day of miracles. He said, I got in the right car with my wife. We were going somewhere. And I looked at her and said, I'm so sorry. I was cranky and had a bad attitude. You're right. You know, I just felt the Lord tell me that this day is a day he created. And I am going to rejoice even though I do not feel like it and be glad in it. And I looked at my wife and he said, and I believe today could be a day of miracles. And he said, no matter, well, I, he said, just about the time I got that out of my mouth, the phone began to ring. And they said, Mr. Gardner? He said, yes. He said, this is Tampa General Hospital. He said, we have a kidney for you. He said, can you be here in several hours? He said, Pastor, we raced the Tampa General. They put that kidney in me. He said, matter of fact, the doctors have marveled how quickly my body has received the kidney. He said, the fluids have just went with uh, released for me without medication. He said, matter of fact, they're getting ready to allow me to go home. He stood right there and worship today. You couldn't even tell anything was wrong with it. I said all that to say that sometimes it's you just rising up and say, Lord, I know I'm battling, but this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why I don't understand but I trust you I don't understand but you will leave me I don't understand but I do know this you're an on time God you're never late, you're never early but you're always on time so I declare you're an alpha God and an omega God a beginning God and an ending God Father I rise up declaring this is the day that the Lord hath made, I will I will, I will, I will I will, I will, I will I don't feel like it but I will I don't understand, but I will. I can't figure it out, but I will. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. Our church is not built on one individual, but on the sacrifice of so many. And so you being a part of that means so much to us. Our vision here at City Life is to reach the lost, help restore what has been broken, and to release people into their God-given purpose. If you would like to partner with us today, text GIVE to 844-311-1777 or visit our website. For more great content and messages, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also download our City Life app and follow us on Facebook and Instagram while you're at it. Our services are at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd love to have you be with us in person at one of our locations. And like we say here at City Life, go and be the city.